Hey guys, so today we're actually going to talk about how I set up my real rifle with my airsoft gun. Can you guess which one is which? Well, you'll find out here in a second, but uh, let's jump into it. This gun right here, if you guessed correctly, is the airsoft gun. Uh, I actually got my start in airsoft before really jumping headlong into the firearms industry. Uh, so I actually had this gun first. So unlike most people that will, I guess you could say they'll clone their real gun uh, and clone it with an airsoft gun, I actually cloned my real gun to be more like my airsoft gun. So I've always liked the 11.5 length and if it just so happens 11.5 has some pretty good properties for a short rifle in the real world. Um, I personally love the length because it's a mix of being able to use it in a CQB environment and being able to get around things very easily. Um, but it also has enough rail space so that I can mount stuff on here, which ironically I don't have a whole lot mounted on this gun just because of the new mounts. We'll get into that. Um, but this is the base gun is a Crytac Umbrella Armory gun. They built this amazing gun. I've used it probably at 80% of the games that I've played over the last couple of years where it has been my primary workhorse. I think shoots like 400 FPS, 30 rounds a second. Blaze and shoot super far, um, super accurate. And if, again, like I've mentioned before in the past, if you are going to compete at a national level event, you should probably bring a gun that is worthy of said event because the days of bringing an OEM stock airsoft gun to a national level event are slowly winding down because of how good guns are getting out there. It's so much more competitive. Now, if you're looking at it from a training perspective, that might not matter as much. It's more so how you want to set it up to be just like your real gun, so the controls are very similar. Um, but just kind of give you the rundown of how this one is set up. I've got the EPS stock on here by PTS. In fact, all the furniture for the most part is from PTS. Um, this is the enhanced polymer stock. It's designed to hold batteries. I can put like two, three days worth of batteries in here. Uh, for the 24 hour and 40 hour operations or longer. Um, it's a very beautiful stock, has really good QD features on both sides, extremely easy to fit the batteries. In fact, it probably is one of the widest battery compartments to be used with a bunch of different batteries in the market. Um, it also has QD right here on the uh, end of the receiver. And I've also got the enhanced polymer grip. So the enhanced polymer grip, I really like it because it's kind of reminds me of the BCM gunfighter grip. Very, very, comfortable in terms of it getting your hand more in line with the gun, right? More and more in line with trigger finger, if you will. Um, super comfortable and what's great is that PTS actually makes the electric version and the gas blowback version of this and the gas blowback version works on a real GAT. Super based. Um, I've got an ambidextrous mag release on this gun. I've also got my optics set up here. Now this is kind of where it gets really interesting. I'm a big proponent of using optics especially if you own night vision that are set up for me to be able to use passive aiming and then having a magnifier because having a magnifier is a great way of getting positive identification on what you're about to shoot at. Is it a friendly? Is it an enemy? Is it a guy? Is it a log? We've all been there. It's like, I don't know what I'm looking at. Or just being able to see your BBs a little better. If you're a little older like me, my eyesight is just kind of starting to go and I probably should be getting LASIK. Um, but haven't quite got there yet. So magnifier it is. And I love the flip to center because it gets perfectly out of the way, dropping out of the field of view of, you know, your red dot. So it allows you to focus on the optic. Now I use the Unity Fast line of mounts typically. And what's great is that if you're an airsoft, you can't afford the real one. PTS got you covered. PTS is the licensed manufacturer for all Unity Fast stuff. Doesn't matter if it's their aimpoint stuff, their magnifier stuff, LPVOs, EOTechs, all kinds of risers and other accessories as well. Unity and PTS teamed up and make the best stuff. Um, what's also cool about this setup, and I happen to be using a uh, HRF skiff. So HRF Concepts uh, makes a laser mount that goes directly into the Unity Fast. So what I like about this idea is that you don't have to buy a completely separate mount. You can use probably one of the most prolific mounts on the market and have a laser mount bolt directly into there. Now, why would you want your laser this high? Really, this comes into play mostly for short guns. Guns that have really, really, really short rail systems where there's just not a lot of places for your hands, switches, lights, everything, and lasers. What I like about it is it actually clears it. So if I was running a gun cam for airsoft or training, I could actually put a gun cam on here and the laser would clear it. Or vice versa, you could put the laser down here and you could put the gun cam on the mount right here. So 
kind of dealer's choice there, but a really great way of mounting it. And I actually have my controls for my laser right here, right next to my light. So a very deliberate power of authority, activate the laser, activate the light. Um, what's also interesting about it, once you talk about it into real gun terms, like deviation and ballistics, it matters in airsoft, but not as much as it matters in real life. I do have this setup on my real gun. I've tested it out to like 100 yards, 150 yards or something. It's perfectly fine, but of course, whenever you increase the deviation on your optics and your lasers that definitely comes into play so definitely something i'm testing out but i don't have a solid answer on how much that really affects your height over bore because obviously you're adding height over bore with the laser just as you are with the optic um so basically you're kind of your parallel zeros kind of up here between the laser and the optic and you just have a greater height over bore know how to account for that when you're using your real rifle and the ballistics again that go into that as you can see toward the front of the gun i've got a centurion arms rail system I love Centurion Arms products. They're badass, they're beefy, um, but also lightweight at the same time. The Centurion Arms rail that PTS originally came out with, with it, which is this one, has cutie points at the front and the rear of the rail system. And I basically mirrored uh, my sling setup with my cutie points, just like I did on my real gun. So I've got the Haley cutie up here, because just because I like the 45 degree, but you can still mount it to the front and back of the rail system, which is actually really nice because there's a lot of guys that like to be able to switch their QD from one to the other, particularly in terms of real steel shooting and how they want to shoot at distance. When it comes to the illumination tools, I have a Surefire Scout Light Pro on here with just the thumb button tail cap. Normally I would run like a pressure switch or something like that, but I just don't have it set up for this, but you'll see it on my next setup. This has got the thumb button, so it's extremely easy to activate the light, as you can see. Uh, and then I have my laser right behind it. So, uh, and then when I'm not using it, I typically just wrap my thumb around the light like so, or off to the side, or I just grip the whole thing. But that way I don't accidentally um, ND the light or ND the laser, especially if I'm running around at night. So I'll just index my thumb over the tail cap instead of behind it. Um, but that's more or less the airsoft setup. Let's go ahead and grab the real boy. So. As you can see, it's funny because this is about the same length. It almost feels a little bit lighter. Uh, I'll probably measure out the weights, but as you can see, there's some immediate differences. Um, the pressure switch and the light setup is a little bit different and I have a little bit different stock, but other than that, it is not too crazy uh, of a variety. I've got the slimmer EPSC on here, which is a not battery bearing stock. Although there is a extended butt pad. If you want to use this stock for airsoft and want to use electric gun that's rear wired, the extended butt pad from PTS should be coming out very soon if it's not out already. Um, I've also got a law folder on here because when it comes to real guns, it's actually really, really nice to be able to fold them and not a lot of airsoft guns have that capability yet, unless it's a gas blowback gun, uh, which technically this is a gas blowback gun, it's just, you know, real direct and pin. But as you can see, like I mentioned before, the super based EPG C is on this gun. And I've also got the Centurion Arms vertical foregrip on here as well. In a similar position, and that's uh, another good point to make, uh, Drew Hopkins made a good video about how they clone their airsoft guns, and they actually would mark on their airsoft gun or their real gun where all the things were down to the rail spaces, so that way they can match where the controls and the lights and the grips are. Now, I didn't get too much into the weeds with that because for me, as long as I've got the gun, I've got a pretty good reference of where things are uh, jumping between the two because I relatively place them in the same spot. Optic and um, uh, the optic and laser setup is basically identical. I use same laser, same uh, magnifier, same mounting system. Uh, just instead of a T2, it's a T1. So I might actually switch it with my other gun, put the, the newer optic on the real one. But for, for now, this has worked just fine. Now where it really kind of diverges is like the muzzle device. The rail system is the newer version of the Centurion Arms rail system, but still has a lot of the same features. Uh, it's just a little bit sleeker because of the M-Lock version. And I'm not using the Centurion Arms rail panels. Uh, I've actually got BCM rail panels on here, um, which are nice, but the gun's gonna get a little hot and you're not gonna have as much protection as you would with the full size rail panels. Um, the pressure switch is actually pretty badass. This is the Unity Axon. Now I've actually got it mounted backwards because I like the ability to actually run uh, my buttons and my switches um, kind of, I believe pressing into your body is kind of the way to go versus pushing away from you to hit the buttons. Uh, I'll have a full video just on the Axon, but just real quick, um, basically the front button or what would be the rear button, which is kind of like a built-in mod light button. I've got my laser 
as you can see. Got my laser, and then I've got my light and my laser. So, because this is the sync version, when I hit the angled button, it activates both. Now, I do plan on switching both lights to be um, Scout Light Pro or whatever Scout Light Vampire modes because I like using my lights at nighttime for searching in dark places where there is no light because night vision only amplifies the light, but if you're in an area where there is no light, you might need to use that. Now, having that as an illuminator on, um, on here is exceptionally well, exceptionally great, uh, but don't forget you also have your illuminator on your laser as well, um, which will project out much further. This is definitely good for clearing rooms and other you know, place it close distance, and I figured if your light is on, your laser might be on too, so that way you can accurately engage while you're searching as well. So that more or less kind of covers how I have this set up. As you can see, it is very, very identical, and I really wanted to get something close, and I just think it's really hilarious that I actually ended up building this gun first before I built this one. So you can see they're very, very identical in their appearance and um, you know by training with one or the other um, I'm kind of building the myelination in my brain of how the rifle is used um, both the controls um, the pressure switches of stuff and of course I'm gonna get that a little bit more in line once I get another UDD axon I'm gonna match that up on my uh, my airsoft gun uh, but for the most part the grip and where I kind of index is mostly in the same place the lasers in the same place optics is in the same place just minor differences here and there just because you know there's just things that you can't get exactly right depending on how far you want to go with airsoft and uh, realistic rifles and whatnot but um, yeah so that is more or less how I set up my real steel gun and my airsoft gun. I did think it was funny that I kind of went backwards where I built the real steel one to be like my airsoft gun and not vice versa. Um, but there's a lot of great places to get quality equipment, whether you're doing airsoft or you're doing real steel or training or everything in between or just LARPing in your basement. Um, I do recommend getting quality components, whether you're using BCM or Centurion Arms, uh, Unity, Aimpoint, EOTech, um, and PTS, um, even on the airsoft side, there's definitely a tier of quality out there. And PTS has always been making exceptional quality polymer products and as well as quality licensed accessories like Centurion Arms, Unity, Radiant Weapons, you name it. So keep training guys. Um, I just wanna let you guys know that there's all kinds of stuff happening in the world right now. So it is a time right now where the real steel community and the airsoft community and everything in between, even the gaming community, should probably get on the same page, specifically if you're in the gun industry. I do think it's one of those things that if you're supporting the gun industry, it'd be who of you to support the airsoft industry because that is the future of the gun community. That's the future gun owners right there. And vice versa, the airsoft community, which um, benefits greatly from the advantages or the um, products that are created and things that uh, the gun industry brings to the table, the airsoft community gets to benefit from. So. If you're in the airsoft community, support the gun community. If you're in the gun community, support the airsoft community. We're all in the same boat. We only got one, as a wise man once said. So this is uh, Spartan117GW. Thank you guys for watching. Keep sharpening that sword. Keep training. Keep learning, educating, and teaching other people. Uh, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time.